The right way to make a cocktail is however you like to drink it. There's been a lot of changes to the old fashioned since it was first made. Now, it didn't used to be called the old fashioned because back when it was first invented, it wasn't old yet. What it was called is cocktail. And back then they didn't have any other cocktails. That was it. They had various punches and things like that, but they didn't have a cocktail. This was the very first cocktail. And a cocktail basically consisted of a spirit, sugar, bitters, and that's it. So with your very first cocktails, you didn't just make them with whiskey. You could also make it with cognac. You can make it with vodka. You can make it with gin. You could do anything you wanted to. So if you wanted an old fashioned, what it was back then was basically just a cocktail. So you asked for a gin cocktail or a whiskey cocktail. Now later on, other cocktails were made and hence the old fashioned became the old fashioned way of making a cocktail. So if you went up to a bar and you wanted a cocktail, you would say, oh, make me a whiskey cocktail the old fashioned way. Now, around the time of prohibition, whiskey was bad. Most of the liquors were bad. It was very difficult to get high quality spirits. You know, you might end up with something good from Canada or you might end up with something that old crazy Joe made in his bathtub and it's the worst spirit you've ever had in your entire life. So in order to just have an old fashioned with just a little bit of sugar and a little bit of bitters, you might have an awful tasting beverage. And that's when they started tweaking a little bit just to cover up the taste of the bad alcohol. So that's when people started muddling oranges and cherries in there. That drink was never really intended to be a very sweet drink. And the way they were making it during Prohibition was just this pink paste liquor that you know you just tasted a bunch of sweetness and that continued on over time throughout the 50s throughout the 60s in the 70s and 80s they started adding soda water to it for some reason I don't even know why they started adding soda water to it but around the time the TV show Mad Men was set in you were basically throwing a bunch of oranges in there a bunch of cherries in there and soda water and Mad Men's important because Mad Men reminded people after the 70s and 80s and 90s that the old-fashioned even existed as a drink it brought it back into the mainstream consciousness about the old-fashioned and people started drinking that drink because Don Draper drank that drink. And around that time, just general trends were going towards more towards classic cocktails and the bartenders started making things the pre-prohibition way and cocktails started getting good again. And that's how the old fashioned became popular. But a lot of bartenders at that time didn't know classic bartending techniques and classic cocktail making and stuff like that. They learned what they learned in the 80s. And that was to just make some pink goo with whiskey and put some soda water in there and call it an old fashioned. And you know, around that time, most of those guys weren't even used to making old fashions anymore because no one asked for them until Mad Men came out. And that's how people screwed up the old fashioned. <laughs> a modern old fashioned is pretty much just the pre-prohibition way of making old fashioned. And then you can make a couple of changes to it if you feel inclined to. The way I like to make an old fashioned is I like to start off with a rye whiskey. Again, you can use whatever you want. You can use cognac, you can use bourbon, you can use gin. I don't, I don't really care for a gin old fashioned, but I like to use rye. So I would start off with about two ounces of rye your mixing glass there. And then remember, just an old fashioned, a traditional old fashioned, all that is, is just spirit, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of bitters. Now you can put granulated sugar in there. If you do so, then you're gonna need to put a little splash of water, that way it can dilute, and you're gonna have to spend a lot of time diluting it. I prefer to just use simple syrup, which pur purists are against, because it's not, you know, it's not granulated sugar, it is sugar. All simple syrup is, is just half sugar and half water. You already got the sugar and the water in the drink, why not just put them together and make your life easier? But, ah, eh, purists disagree. So I used to like to use a little quarter ounce, simple syrup, not too much, you don't want it too sweet. You want it to really just bring out the flavor of the spirit. And then just some Angostura bitters. Angostura bitters being one of the older, more popular bitters. I like to go with about three dashes in that. And personally, I like to throw a little orange bitter in there. Just for a little bit of extra flavor. And then you get your ice and you stir it. You always want to stir and not shake an old fashioned. What the stirring does for you is it gives you greater control over the dilution of the drink. So water is the unsung hero of every cocktail. The more water you add to the drink, the more you dilute it. And something that's mostly just booze like an old fashioned, you want to have a good dilution ratio. That way it's not too in your face when you have your first sip. So you give it a good stir, your julep strainer, pour it over ice. I like to use a big cube. You just want a little orange swath here. And you use an orange swath and that's it, a pre-prohibition old fashioned. Now you can do whatever you want to it at this point. If you like cherries, you could add cherries to it. I like to just keep it the most classic way.